per pound. This is one scary animal. Hyenodon wreaked havoc across the plains of North America for over 10 million years. Let's say it grabbed my arm. The rear teeth would slice through it like a samurai sword. But this carnivore wasn't the only predator dominating the landscape. Hyenodon had two deadly enemies. These predators were locked in an epic battle where only one would survive. Thirty-two million years ago, as the Oligocene Epoch began, the environment of planet Earth was very different from today. Warmer temperatures meant no polar ice caps. So a place like Antarctica was a lush pine forest. But then, the climate began to change. North American temperatures dropped. With all the open landscape and a huge population of prey animals, North America became a predator's paradise. North America had an amazingly rich fauna. Some people compared it to what we have in the African savanna today. This abundant group of mammals would never be recognized today. There were 90 centimeter high mini horses called mesohippus, small camels without humps and rhinos without horns. The most common was a sheep-like animal, the oreodont. This is an oreodont. It's a fossil sheep, an ancestor to sheep and goats. This was a very tasty animal. At any given moment, the serenity of an open meadow could turn into chaos. The architect of this mayhem was the top predator of its time, Hyenodon. This is Hyenodon hordus, the biggest and baddest animal that lived in the Oligocene Badlands. It was king of the Badlands. This creature had a massive head, perched on a stout body. It was much larger than most of the animals it hunted. The Oligocene was terribly, terribly busy. There were more animals hunting than there are in modern-day Africa. Hyenodon's competition included a saber-toothed cat called Dinictus. But the most bizarre was an aggressive pig-like creature with a nasty attitude the Entelodont. The struggle between these two mega beasts would go on for five million years. Paleontologists marvel at Hyenodon's amazing characteristics. But this creature is a mystery. It is a difficult mammal to study, because few fossils have ever been found. There is only one complete skeleton on the entire planet, at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Only when you have a fully mounted one like this do you have an idea of uh, what this thing really looked like. Dr. Jim Millette is a world-renowned expert on hyenodon. He has been studying the beast for over 30 years. It packed an enormous amount of power into its jaw muscles. Once it caught up with something, the guillotine-like teeth would make short work of any prey.
In laboratories across America, experts are examining this elusive predator. Fossils are rare. But finding a top-end carnivore is even more difficult. Carnivores are very, very rare because there are very few of them living at any one time. With very little fossil evidence, scientists have to piece this puzzle together, literally one bone at a time. What, 13 of them, so we can count one, two, three. This is one of our most complete skeletons. You can see it's not very complete. It's not beautifully preserved, but it's the best that we have, and they are quite rare, as carnivores always are. Now, the preservation isn't exceptional, but it's the best you can do in the Badlands sometimes. These are the Badlands of South Dakota. Here, the volcanic soil contains a gold mine of fossil evidence because of the dense population of prehistoric animals that once lived in this area. These dry river and lake beds reveal extreme events of nature where a flash flood might have surprised and killed thousands of animals. A layer of mud then preserved their bones for millions of years. This animal is in a death position. It died in place and uh, sediments covered it. Uh, chemicals in the uh, groundwater impregnated the bone and uh, made the bone harder and more durable. So it was able to last 30 million years, say. The erosion of the landscape over the course of 30 million years has been so dramatic that fossils can be found nearly everywhere. This bone was in the ground, but we've had a lot of rain here recently, all flooding rain, and it's been scouring this hillside, not just this hillside, the entire Badlands. So the fossils are jumping out of the ground. They're being released by the rain and coming out. The first fossils of Hyenodon were discovered in the Badlands during the mid-1800s. These precious bones were sent to Philadelphia, where Dr. Joseph Lydy first described the animal. He named hyena Don, which simply means hyena tooth. Don means tooth, and hyena is, is self-explanatory. And if I picked this skull up, I wouldn't necessarily call it hyena-like teeth, but he must have thought that it looked very much like a hyena. And so this was the name that he provided. But Dr. Lighty may have jumped to the wrong conclusion when he named this 30-million-year-old predator after the hyena. Oftentimes you're stuck with names that... Um, you know, are just unfortunate, and <laughs> maybe Hyenodon is, is, is one of them. When modern scientists began to carefully study Hyenodon, they could find very little similarity between it and its modern namesake. Hyena and Hyenodon are not related at all. They're quite different animals and with quite different ancestries. The most striking disparity is their head size and posture. If a line is drawn down the spine of both animals, the difference is clear. The hyena's spine is steeply sloping, revealing two short rear legs. Without the modern hyena to use as reference, scientists were puzzled over what hyena don might have looked like. When they looked at its skull, the bony plate on the roof of its mouth extends past the back teeth, so they thought it might be an anteater. They even considered a sea creature. The only other animal that we can think of that has a uh, prolonged bony palate is a dolphin. This is Flipper. Uh, you can see the, uh, the teeth. The teeth end here, and the bony palate continues toward the rear of the jaw. So some people originally thought that hyenodon might have been... Paleontologists depend on modern animals to put a face on the fossils they dig from the ground. But in this case, there's a problem. Anytime you have a uh, fossil animal as bizarre and out of the ordinary as hyenodon, you have difficulty trying to figure out what it did, how it looked, how it ran. Using new technology, Dr. Millet suggests building a hybrid model of the beast, borrowing components from similar predators. 
They start with the wolf, an animal with the same stance and dog-like behaviors as the hyena dog. I take the uh, skull from a hyena dog and take the head off the wolf. The wolf has much longer legs, which allow it to run faster. They have to shorten the legs to match the size and stance of a hyenodon. Now that looks really bizarre. The skull looks so huge, it looks as if uh, if the animal were standing there, the, uh, the head would tip it forward. The wolf body is too small for the hyenodon's head, so Dr. Millet chooses a prehistoric predator as a model for hyenodon's body type, the saber-tooth cat. Saber-toothed cats are much more heavily built. When they did their attacks on larger prey, they were almost bear-like in the way they would run on something. The saber-toothed body fits much better with the head of hyenodon, except for the shoulder muscles, meaning that the cat's front legs were much stronger than hyenodon's. Can you eliminate the high bump? Sure, let me just paint those down here. Can you reduce the size of the limb muscles? Reducing the cat's leg muscles brings the model very close to Hyenodon. But there's one last adjustment, the tail length. So if you can take the tail and make it about twice as long. Now we've got an animal that looks like a real critter. That's really good. Hyenodon was more like a big cat than a wolf because it needed a bulky body for its large head. It ran on short, muscular legs that could quickly accelerate, but also had the power to cover long distances. The question is, how did all these parts work together to make this creature one of the fiercest predators of its time? The massive head of Hyenodon is an exquisite killing machine. The unique design of this creature's teeth and jaws make it one of the most dangerous predators ever to walk the earth. Let's say I got caught out in the open and it grabbed my arm. And the first bite would crush both bones in my arm. And as the bite continued, the rear teeth would slice through it like a samurai sword. This is Hyenodon hordus. This is a large hordus. This is 15 inches of ferocious terror. This is one of the largest skulls of Hyenodon hordus known. Big, big skull. Big teeth, teeth the size of a grizzly bear. Behind four large, deadly canines was a mouth full of razor-sharp teeth. The way this thing attacked prey would be uh, visualizing, let's say, a pit bull with a, a guillotine in its mouth. The beast had a set of eight slicing teeth, four on each side of the jaw. As long as you've got a really sharp cutting edge, you can chop that food up into small pieces. The smaller the pieces are chopped up, the more quickly it can be digested, the more quickly it's made available to the animal. Hyenodon's jaw had an advantage that no other mammal has ever had. Its teeth stayed in perfect alignment for the life of the beast. For most other predators, their teeth wear down to nubs as they get older, so they can't slice up meat. When they can no longer process food, they starve to death. Hyenodon solved this problem in a way that no other mammal did it. What happened was the uh, teeth over a lifetime rotated inward. And you can see on this very aged one, the equivalent of a 90-year-old uh, in human terms, the uh, cutting edge is actually going across the roots of the teeth. In order to maintain the close contact essential for chewing, the upper teeth rotated inward and the lower teeth rotated outward. These self-sharpening teeth meant that even in old age, the animal could chew up a carcass. Even for an animal that has got all the enamel worn off its teeth, it's still maintaining a cutting edge between the upper and lower jaws. 
Hyenodon also had another devastating weapon, Bite Force. Pound for pound, this is one scary animal. At Australia's University of New South Wales, Dr. Stephen Rowe has turned a hyenodon skull into a digital testing ground, where he can measure the bite strength of its razor-sharp jaws. Hyenodon is biting as hard as a large African lion. When Dr. Rowe crash-tested the skull, he found that Hyenodon's head and jaw muscles could produce about 270 kilograms of bite force. Hyenodon's jaws were even more deadly near the back of its mouth, because the bite force of its meat-slicing teeth was three times greater than that of its front canine teeth. There is relatively little sophistication involved in a Hyenodon kill. This is an animal that just got in there and applied tremendous bite force to crush its potential prey. Paleontologists like Jaff Boyce have spent years searching the badlands, sifting for evidence of predation from the Oligocene Epoch. I found this a few days ago and it was kind of wet out here and it was uh, too fragile to rescue at that time but I'm gonna try to try to get it uncovered here. Boyce has found evidence of a ferocious hyenodon attack in a place most people would never look. Animal feces, also known as coprolites. All these are coprolites, fossilized feces. And these coprolites are from carnivores. We know they're from carnivores because they're high in calcium. Inside the coprolites, Boyce found remnants of a horse skull that had been crushed, digested, and then discharged. Most predators would never bite into the skull of a prey animal because they might break their teeth. There's very little meat on a skull, so you leave the skulls alone. There was only one animal that had strong enough jaws, strong enough teeth, strong enough desire in its ferociousness to eat a skull, and that's hyenodon. The smoking gun was the 30 million year old front incisor tooth that was still completely intact. You can see how the teeth are uh, uh, the same shape. Probably the reason that this is in the coprolite is the hyenodon grabbed the horse, crushed its nostril, crushed its, the front of its face in order to kill it, and then swallowed what he had in his mouth. Hyenodon's mouth opened wide enough to fit around a prey animal's skull, so it could crush it in one bite. Years of field research have helped establish the sheer strength of Hyenodon, but its intelligence is less well understood. Such a huge head could indicate Hyenodon had plenty of space for a large brain. Now, with CAT scan technology, Dr. Larry Whitmer can look inside the skull of Hyenodon and gain an extraordinary view of this animal as if it was still alive. But after 30 million years, the skull has fossilized into rock, making it difficult to distinguish the true size and shape of the brain cavity. The biggest problem we have is we don't really know what we're supposed to find. This is the first time we've ever CAT scanned hyenodon, so we don't really know what to expect. Dr. Whitmer discovers that most of hyenodon's skull was filled with jaw muscles, leaving very little space for its brain. But he also finds amazing bioengineering that allowed the animal to get maximum efficiency out of these muscles. When the animal was actually chewing and attacking and biting, potentially clamping down on prey, it would have had a problem with those large jaw muscles closing down the airway. In order to eat and breathe at the same time, Hyenodon developed a remarkably long nasal tube. So by having this long bony tube extending 
all the way to the almost the very end of the, of the head, it allows the animal to have a large prey item um, filling up its mouth, yet still breathe through its nose. Really quite a dramatic adaptation. Hyenodon's brain is divided into three small lobes, devoted to intelligence, smell, and coordination. The amount of the brain that was devoted to the sense of smell was absolutely enormous, suggesting that, that the sense of smell, certainly in comparison to the sense of sight or hearing, was far more important to Hyenodon than any of the other senses. Dr. Whitmer believes that Hyenodon's sense of smell was its primary method for finding prey. It could follow the scent of any animal from over one and a half kilometers away. And when it came to the chase, Hyenodons relied on strength more than agility. It probably didn't engage in sort of these rapid, fine, delicate kinds of predatory movements. It probably just ran in there sort of like a, a truck and, 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 and mowed down its prey. At the center of the brain was the neocortex. Its small size means that Hyenodon wasn't an intelligent animal. But this wasn't a disadvantage, because 30 million years ago, no animal had the higher intelligence of modern predators and prey. Hyenodon really viewed its environment, you know, fairly coarsely. Um, it couldn't really respond in sophisticated ways to wrinkles in its environment. It probably could be relatively easily fooled or bluffed. This was an animal that was driven more by instinct rather than uh, by thought. Hyenodon's limited intelligence also meant it probably didn't hunt in packs. It probably didn't have the brain power for the kind of cooperative hunting that we see in a lot of dog-like animals today, like wolves, that actually work as a team and sort of nip at their prey. Hyenodon's unique bioengineering gave it the tools to become a top predator. Still, it needed a diverse skill set to hunt down the many different kinds of prey animals in the wide open grasslands of North America. If it didn't develop those skills, it was doomed. Thirty million years ago, North America's Great Plains were like a well-stocked supermarket for a carnivore like Hyenodon. But the landscape was changing into more open country, so an ambush predator like Hyenodon had to adapt to a different hunting strategy. There was one place where its razor jaws could get close enough to surprise and kill prey. A watering hole. In South Dakota's Badlands, paleontologists discovered an ancient watering hole that was the perfect fast food stand for an ambush predator like Hyenodon. Well, since 1993, we found approximately between 8 and 10,000 bones, which is a staggering number, especially for a quarry of this size. This collection of bones is solid evidence of the large number of animals that were killed and eaten here. Obviously, we can equate this to something that would happen like in, in Africa today. Everybody's got a drink. The predators know it, so they just sit and wait for easy kills, and that's probably what happened here. Water holes were a popular place for hyenodon to hang out, especially if there was any type of vegetation, where it would allow it to have some cover to get close enough to within a few yards of a horse while it's drinking. But the horse that hyenodon hunted was nothing like the horses we know today. This horse in front of me is known as Myohippus. It's one of the earlier horses from North America. Horses actually started out even half this big, but by the time of the big badlands, this is the common horse you see. The Mesohippus was about one third of the size of a modern day horse, but still a very fast runner. An animal like this Mesohippus or Myohippus horse like this has no real defenses against a predator. So it would have to rely on being able to outrun and outjump anything that was chasing it. One of the biggest challenges Hyena Don would have had would have been a race against horses if it was trying to chase down, run down that prey and catch it. Many experts believe 
that Hyenodon's short-legged body wasn't fast enough to catch a Mesohippus, unless it could ambush the fleet-footed horse. Right, Dr. So Jim Millette disagrees with this theory. He's designed a demonstration to test the speed of a short-legged pit bull, a modern animal similar in build to the Hyenodon. The only way we can collect data is from modern animals and then we draw inferences about what the fossil forms were capable of doing. The physics don't lie. If the, if the limb dimensions are going to be the same and the musculature is approximately the same, they're going to move at about the same rate when you compare one short-limbed animal to another. The key measurement runs from the uh, knee of the dog down to the, uh, the ground. That's the uh, part of the limb that really controls speed. Now typically dogs with short legs are going to run relatively slowly, but I'm willing to bet this dog makes up for it because it has powerful musculature. We have the power on. Uh, I'm going to aim it. Dr. Millette will use a radar gun and track the dog's speed. All right, radar gun is hot. Come on, Pepper! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Good boy! 36. Good. We got 36 miles an hour, which is six miles an hour faster than a horse. I was astounded when the uh, pit bull came up 36 miles an hour on the radar gun. He was only accelerating a relatively short distance, but he got up to speed very quickly. This is an animal with relatively short legs that's capable of running really fast. The hyenodon skull would be twice as long as this animal, but I think the hyenodon would run in about the same range, 35, 36 miles an hour, and catch prey relatively easily. But horses were not the only fleet-footed item on the menu. There were also camels. These small relatives of today's African variety were a staple of hyenodon's diet. There actually are places in the Badlands where we have assemblages of camel bones that may have been eaten by hyenodon. Camels were faster than horses. With a distinct size advantage, hyenodon could have used its bulk to win this race. It would be relatively easy for Hyenodon to get up parallel to it and just lunge into it. Once you got it on the ground, it's all over. With so many different animals on the landscape, Hyenodon had to constantly change its hunting strategy. The ability to catch a horse is going to be different from catching an Oreodont, is going to be different from going after a rhino. The hornless rhino was the biggest creature that Hyenodon tangled with, and the biggest challenge. In general, most of the rhinos in North America are among the largest animals in the landscape, and very unlikely that most of the predators would have had much chance with them. The rhino was an inviting target, but Hyenodon was not big enough to knock it off its feet. It would zero in on it and then start chasing it. It's going to be running up and using the powerful jaws to grab the hind leg of the animal to inflict damage to it. They have to be careful they don't get kicked, but you come up on the flanks where the skin is thin. It's going to start losing blood. It's going to weaken. But once Hyenodon made a fresh kill, things changed. it too became a target. Waiting for a free meal was the fierce Entelodont, a 270 kilogram toothy beast that experts call the hell pig. If you were another animal on the landscape when you saw one of these things, I think you'd go in the opposite direction. Hyenodon had what Entelodont wanted and neither was willing to share. Making a kill was easy for Hyenodon. With its exceptional hunting skills, the razor-toothed predator could capture any prey it wanted. 
keeping that kill was another matter. Hyenodon is not going to give up its carcass without a fight. It's going to want to maintain it. It put a lot of energy into getting that animal. It's not going to want to give it up. Archaeotherium was primarily a scavenger, and there is fossil evidence from the North Dakota Badlands that this fierce pig had a preference for rhino meat. So when the hyenodont killed a rhino, it was at risk. The entelodont had the ability to track down the dead rhino by using its highly developed sense of smell. I can think of a scenario where Hyenodon has taken down some prey and Archaeotherium comes in to steal that prey from it. Hyenodon may say, no, I'm going to protect my food. The pig posed a real threat because its massive skull weighed about 22 kilograms. In this fight, the Entelodon had a distinct size advantage. The pig stood about 120 centimeters high and weighed in at about 270 kilograms. The hyenodon stood about 90 centimeters tall and weighed less than 70 kilograms. Although hyenodon was faster and had sharper teeth, the pig's jaws opened wide enough to crush its head. Dr. Millet has found fossil evidence of a broken shoulder bone from a hyenodon that may have resulted from a battle with an entelodont. It's broken right across here, and the shoulder blade, the scapula, has shortened about 30%. Dr. Millet theorizes that there is only one animal that could have inflicted this kind of damage on hyenodon. The height of the shoulder of a hyenodont and the skull of an entelodont, they're both about the same level. This fossil evidence gives us a rare glimpse into what a battle between these two top predators might have been like. Hyenodon would have to be quick. It would have to stay away from the jaws of Archaeotherium. If Archaeotherium got hyenodon into its jaws, the fight would be over. The hyenodon might be fast enough to inflict some damage. But the pig's size would prove to be the difference. All the entelodon had to do was move that massive skull, that 50-pound skull, sideways with those big flanges, and bang, you would have fractured the scapula. In this particular fight, it looks like the hyenodon barely escaped with its life. The shoulder blade was broken, and the animal could still move with a pronounced limp. Both scientists agree that the hyenodon didn't have the weaponry to hold off a hungry entelodont. But other fossil evidence shows that hyenodon wasn't afraid to hunt juvenile pigs. When this guy was little, a hyenodon grabbed it by the snout. You can see the scar here where the bone is healed. There's one on the other side, upper jaw on the front here, lower jaw on the back. Grabbed this entelodon by the snout and shook it, but didn't kill it. Since Boyce's skull is from an adult, it means the young entelodon survived the brutal attack. There are very few fossils that show evidence of these vicious encounters. Every time paleontologists find a bone damaged by a predator, it provides an important window into this violent world. In 2006, 12, Dr. 20, John Hoganson opened an investigation into the death of a Denictus, an early saber-tooth cat. The main evidence in this case was a 30-million-year-old skull. There were tooth puncture marks on the skull. We then became interested in trying to find out uh, what animal would have been able to attack and prey on this cat. The Denictus was a dangerous predator that nobody wanted to tangle with. It had large saber teeth that could slash the throat of its prey. Whatever animal killed this cat would have probably grabbed it from the top 
or perhaps from underneath the, of the skull. Could very possibly be that this was a killing blow. There's no healing that we can see on these puncture marks. It didn't live very long after this happened. Dr. Hoganson brought the cat skull to Dr. Jim Martin at the School of Mines in Rapid City, South Dakota, so they could try and match up the teeth marks with the wide array of predators in the collection. Within a short time, two of the main suspects are eliminated. Here's the uh, entelodon. It's just way, no, I, the teeth are way too big. Yeah. too big. Let's eliminate that. Let's check this other dinictus out and see if it's uh, intraspecific competition here. We were thinking that another cat of the same species, another dinictus, had actually uh, killed this animal. So I was envisioning some kind of real major cat fight that took place. The cat's saber teeth don't match up with the width of the puncture wounds on the skull. With another suspect eliminated, they turn their attention to Hyenodon. Well, these punctures uh, really do match up with the teeth on Hyenodon. All three puncture holes line up with the canine teeth of Hyenodon. Somehow, the razor tooth predator got the better of the cat. I think it was a, a sneak attack. The hyenodon probably surprised the cat. Because the cat probably would have been quicker than the hyenodon in many ways. The hyenodon would have come in and actually bit it here initially, penetrating the brain case and the eye socket as well. Devastating blow. Then it probably would have uh, quite quickly actually moved and, and bit the animal again. Fossil evidence shows that the hyenodon was one of the top predators for more than 20 million years. But when the Miocene epoch began about 22 million years ago, a new competitor arrived, the bear dog. These fierce hybrids with lion-sized bodies were about to challenge Hyenodon for the crown of North America's top predator. About 20 million years ago, Hyenodon had evolved into its most dominant species ever, Horridus. <laughs> The fossil record shows that this animal was abundant in the North American landscape. But life in the Miocene was becoming difficult for the guillotine-jawed beast. Numerous factors led to its demise, starting with climate change. When we talk about the extinction of Hyenodon, the world itself was changing around 20 million years ago. It was much more open habitat, brushy or grassland, much less of the scrubs and dense forests that Hyenodon evolved in. Colder temperatures created a more open landscape that offered even fewer places to hide and store prey animals. Not only was it harder to ambush, but after millions of years of evolution, the prey animals were getting bigger and faster. By 20 million years ago, there were probably not many animals left that Hyundai could have caught. The camels, the horses, many of the groups of animals that had been in North America for a very long time were all becoming longer-legged and better runners and better adapted to outrunning all archaic predators like Hyundai. So these uh, more advanced animals were able to run quicker than Hyenodon without expending any more energy. And uh, we think that that was one of the things that led to their extinction. If a predator has to exert more energy to catch a prey animal than it gets from eating the carcass, it suffers an energy loss which decreases its ability to reproduce. If you produce fewer progeny one generation after another, you're going to become extinct. Another environmental factor was the transformation of the landscape into grasslands. 
This had a huge impact on Oreodons, one of Hyenodon's main sources of food. The Oreodont could not eat grass. If they started feeding on grass, their teeth would wear down. They would starve to death. The world around it was changing drastically. Yet Hyenodon didn't have the mental capacity to adapt. The one real challenging thing that we see with Hyenodon is this part up here, the neocortex. They're so small in Hyenodon that we would suggest that Hyenodon was pretty much driven by instinct and stereotype behaviors. Many of the prey animals were rapidly evolving larger brains, while the Hyenodon's brain stopped growing. As time progressed, it fell behind the intelligence curve. It's very possible that Hyenodon, given its smaller brain size, did not have the mental capability of adjusting to changing behavior of the animals that were now running away from it, were recognizing it as a predator. The disappearance of much of its prey was bad enough. But 4,800 kilometers north of the Great Plains, an even bigger threat was reshaping Hyenodon's world. For the first time since before the dinosaurs, polar ice caps began to form. These polar glaciers sucked water out of the ocean. This caused sea levels to drop, forming a land bridge between Russia and Alaska. With this new pathway, bear dogs from Asia began to migrate into North America. It's presumed that they walked across the Bering Land Bridge, which was not a very big corridor back then. It would have been relatively easy for animals to move up through Siberia, across the Bering Straits, and then right down through Canada and back to the other parts of North America. Bear dogs were extremely dangerous. They had the bulk of a bear and speed and guile of a wolf. Uh, when you look closely at this animal here, it would have been a pretty scary thing to be in front of it. It has some of the largest canines you'll see of any predator that ever lived, except for a saber tooth. Hyenodon would have little chance defending a carcass against a bear dog. Look at a large hyenodon like this one here, it is nowhere near as big as the biggest of these bear dogs. This big bear dog here is almost certainly capable of beating any hyenodon in a head-to-head -head battle. When it came to hunting, bear dogs quickly established their dominance. It's a much more sophisticated animal than any hyenodon, plus the fact that with a large size like this and a long stride length, this animal could have certainly covered ground a lot faster than the hyenodon. This animal was able to kill just about everything that lived in its time. Bear dogs were killing an abundance of prey, taking the food right out of Hyenodon's mouth. The best Hyenodon could hope for was to scavenge a few scraps after the bear dogs had finished eating. And this wouldn't have sustained its existence we have something called the competitive exclusion principle and it says that two species can't occupy the same ecologic niche at the same time. It's like having two McDonald's right next to one another on a street. Uh, they're only going to be drawing from the same customer base and either they're going to have to merge or go out of business. As the bear dog population increased, it was the final nail in Hyenodon's coffin. Hyenodons went extinct right about the time these huge bear dogs appeared. So I think it's reasonable that these large, modernized, very fast, very effective predators drove hyenodons to extinction. In essence, hyenodon became obsolete. It outlived its own usefulness and was replaced by bigger, faster and smarter carnivores such as wolves and cats. Most species of mammal don't last more than five million years. The hyenodon was able to survive for over 10 million years. This amazing beast was able to thrive and dominate using jaw power. The reason it ruled is 
these jaws. Hyenodon hordus had the strongest jaws of the animals of this time. Pound for pound, this animal has amazing bite force. Hyenodon is biting much harder than anything that's alive today. Hyenodon created a reign of terror by just using its head. It dominated with this one lethal weapon that could dispatch a prey animal within seconds. Its powerful razor-sharp bite left a mark in history that will never be matched.